Hey, sports fans, Larry Eater here. It is day nine, World Athletics Outdoor Championships, Budapest, 2023. We're in Budapest, Hungary, baby. Been here for 11 days. I'm leaving tomorrow. I was going to go to Zurich, but you know what? I am so fried from this wonderful championships and in uh, coordinating riders in the U.S. and riders here and photographers in the, here and video people and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, my brain is fried, baby. So I'm jumping on a plane at tomorrow at 2.20. I get in at 11 o'clock tomorrow night, and I will be uh, out of commission for a day or two. So, But we'll have stories up for you, and we'll have videos up for you, and we'll have Instagram stuff up for you, and we'll have Twitter now, Elon Musk X. Why does he just call it, you know, Elon Musk butthead X or something? You know, the X thing just annoys me. Anyway, okay. And then there's Facebook, and I'm waiting to, for Facebook to change its name, too, to something like, you know, I don't know. We'll, we'll come up with that one. That'll be a contest. All right. It was all finals tonight, kids. And it was a great night, final night of track and field. Now, there was a marathon in the morning. And let me just go back to that because there was some good stuff that happened here. Uh, are they going to let me get into it? That's going to be interesting. No, they're not. So they can bite the big one. All right. So, yeah, the, the, uh, the site has been so overrun that uh, there they had a set something up, jury rigged something so that they could uh, get us the live stuff, but we couldn't get access to everything else. So, uh, but World Athletics did an incredible job. We're going to start with the women's high jump, and it was a great competition. I have to say, Vashti Cunningham, you know, she doesn't compete much anymore. And she looked great up until 190 and then couldn't get over 190. Her coach, her father, and her have decided that she doesn't need to compete much. And from this competition, it's pretty obvious that she needs to compete a hell of a lot more. The top high jumpers are moving away from her. And Vashti Cunningham should be a medal winner, not 10th place. It breaks my heart. And Vashti, you know, um, I I love you. I think you are an incredible athlete, and you've been wonderful interviews. But please, start competing more. Uh, I want to see a medal in Paris, man. I don't want to see you in 10th place. Drive me crazy. You have a medal in your future. Let's get it in Paris, okay? All right. Now, that's my first rabbit hole. There'll be many tonight. I've only had one coffee today, a double espresso with a little cream. It was, oh, actually, no, I just had a long coffee today. So that means no espresso in there yet. So maybe I'll be allowed one on the way home. Let's see. Okay. The uh, There was a very spirited high jump competition. Morgan Lake from Great Britain, former heptathlete, was looking fantastic. She got through 197, just looked great. In each jump, boom, 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 boom. At 197, she cleared. She couldn't get through 199. Nikola Oleslegers, who was the world champion last year, she... Uh, Upset Yaroslava Mahuchik, cleared 199. She had some trouble at 201. Eleanor Patterson, Patterson from Australia took the silver in 199 as seasonal best. Obviously, a uh, difference on uh, attempts. And Yaroslava Mahuchik cleared 201 and then moved it to the almighty 207 and had her second uh, attempt was pretty darn good. But Yaroslava Mahuchik from the Ukraine gave the Ukraine its first gold medal. Eleanor Patterson, silver for Australia, and Nikola Oleslagers from Australia, the bronze. And Morgan Lake, fourth place. Lamara Distin, Jamaica, fifth place. Irnia Garanchenko from the Ukraine, uh, tied for fifth. And Angelina Topic, she's like 18. She's from Serbia. I used to write about her dad, who was a good jumper in the seven, uh, the 90s. And then he got the master's record in the early 2000s for the high jump, too. But Angelina went 194. I think she's gone um, 197, 198. But again, a very nice high jump. And, and, and it's great to have women's field events on the last. The way they handle this, the way they juggled events and their schedule, World Athletics should be complimented on uh, very thoughtful. The men's javelin. This is really interesting. For such a long time, it was Central Europe and Eastern European throwers who dominated this event. Over the last few years, we've had great throwers out of Kenya. We've had great throwers out of India. And we have great throwers out of Pakistan. This event was a case in point. 
In uh, fourth place was Julian Weber, the great German thrower, 85-79. In third place in the bronze was Jakob Vadlich from the Czech Republic, 86-67. In second place was Arshad Nadim from Pakistan, 87-82 seasonal bets. And Neeraj Chopra from India in the gold medal position, 88-17. Neeraj is a tremendous athlete. And I believe India is going to be the next great track and field country. Their relay team set a national record of 259. And uh, we're going to see, they've, we've had some distance runners. We've had some quarter milers and sprinters. Niraj is just phenomenal. But it was a great men's javelin throw. And the crowd, well, they're Hungarian. Goulash, hammer, javelin. Get it right, baby. Right? Okay. Next event is the men's 5,000 meters. The big question was, could Jakob Ingebrigtsen defend his 5,000 title? Or would Mohamed Katir take it away from him? And there were several others in there. Yomif Kajelcha, Hago Skeber Hewitt, who's medaled before. Mo Ahmed, was it going to be his time? Was the French dude, Jimmy Gressier, the one who slides in and cross country races. Was Abdi Noor going to put it together? Stuart McSwain, how is it going to go? So it came down to Mo Katir from Spain, who did make the final in the 1500, tried to steal the race. And he took off with, in the, on the last lap, Jacob Kiprop had gone by Luis Grijalva, who had been running in third place. Luis is from Guatemala. He is uh, repped by Ray Flynn. He is a tremendous athlete, went to NAU, trains with Hoka NAZ. Uh, he took fourth last year, and he is a gutty racer, very old school. I think Luis is rocking. He's going to get a medal. He finished fourth in 13-12-50. Yomif Kajelcha was uh, fifth, 13-12-51. Hagos Geber Hewitt, who tried to steal the race about 4K, 13-12-65. But the medalist came down to Jacob Krop in third 13, 12, 28. Mo Katir didn't get past until 50 to go. Jakob waited until the last 200 and had a put on the hurt. And uh, he won. Jakob won in 13, 11, 30. Mo Katir, 13, 11, 44. And Jakob Krop, Kenya, 13, 12, 28. Again, very satisfying 5,000. Nice to see Jakob get a gold medal. We don't want him to, you know, go home and be upset. Okay. The next race is the women's 800. Boy, this lived up to it, and it was full of surprises. I think Moo took the lead, uh, 26-51, hit the lap in 56-03, uh, give you a, a 600 split, 126-21. And right on her shoulder was Mary Moore, Akili Hodgkinson, Raven Rogers, Gemma Riki, Nia Atkins, Adele Tracy. They were all there. Uh, Halima Nakaya started to drop back just a little bit. Coming off the straightaway, Mary made a bold gesture and started to, she went up with Athing Mu and Athing, Athing started to tie up. Perhaps it was the lack of racing, but Athing gave it her all and I totally respect her for that. Athing finished, but, but here's what happened. I'm not even going to say where Athing finished. As Athing was battling Mary, coming up the inside was Keely Hodgkinson, the same move she used last year. And this time it worked. She got by a thing, but Mary Mora got was in front of all two of the other two. Mary Mora from Kenya won in 156.03 her PB. Keely Hodgkinson Silver 156.34 by class year, but a thing Moo was in third 156.61. Raven Rogers seasonal best 157.45. Gemma Riki, who's been running great all year 157.72 and fifth. Nia Atkins from the U.S., 6th, 157.73, scored a PB. Adele Tracy, 7th for Jamaica, 158.41, scored a B PB. She'd also run a 356 in the 1500. And Halima Nakai, Uganda, 159.18. Great. Uh, yeah, I just think that the uh, Mary Mora has been showing all year that she was very serious about this race, and she wanted to win, and she did. And uh, if a thing is going to take this seriously, uh, she needs to race more. But perhaps it's injuries. We don't know because they don't explain things and they don't want to explain things. The first go-round in the pressers uh, or in the mix zone, I think, didn't really talk. 
Uh, she just, I don't think she likes track right now. I don't think she likes the meat track media. I think she's doing this because she feels she has to, uh, which is the same feeling I get out of Sydney McLaughlin and LeBron. This is not something that Bobby's responsible for. This are these two individual athletes because Allison actually liked the sport and she did very well in the media. She might not have tolerated, you know, might have annoyed the living hell out of her, but we never knew that. A thing makes sure that everybody knows. And, you know, it's it's not a way to engender any positive relationship between the two. So not sure what's going on there. I just hope she gets a break and gets to relax a little bit and do some things she likes doing. The women's 3,000 meters final. Interesting, interesting event. It was a very interesting 3,000. They went out in 258.9. They uh, hit the... 2,000 meters in uh, 557.75, and all that time, Beatrice Chepkowicz led. And it wasn't until 2,600 meters that Winifred Util Yavi, now from Bahrain, yes, she competed for Kenya for a long time, but I guess she got jerked around, as many do, by the Athletics Federation in Kenya. That's why they leave the country. So Bahrain is, you know, uh, uh, she's running for higher, but she's also taking citizenship, and I guess she's living there. Winifred Yavi from Bahrain, 854-29 world leader. Beatrice Chepkowicz, Kenya, 858-98 seasonal best. Faith Shirotich, the 19-year-old from Kenya, 90069 PB. Zerfe Wondemagen from uh, Ethiopia, 905-51. Alice Finot from France, fifth place, 906.15. Watch her for Paris. In sixth, Man, uh, Marusa Mismas Zrimsak from Slovenia, 906.37, another national record. And seventh, Peit Chemutai, 910.26, seasonal best. Moise Gega from Albania, 910.27, seasonal best. Ninth was Jacqueline Chepkowicz. I thought she would battle, 914.72. And tenth was Marwa Uzani, Uzayani, from Tunisia, 9.15.07. In, uh, in, in 11th place was Panul Shadhari from India, 9.15.31, a new national record there. Olivia Gerth scored a PB in 14th, 9.20.08, and Courtney Wayman was 15th in 9.25.90. It was very hot and humid. I just think that's affecting everybody. It's still making me feel kind of gross, so, you know. All right, let's get down to some fun stuff. Uh, the 4x4 four four for men because there's not a U.S. team in the women's. We'll, we'll deal with that on the next thing. I was wondering if India was going to, uh, what India was going to be able to do, but uh, France and Great Britain and Jamaica really pushed the U.S. Quincy Hall ran 44-54, who was the bronze medalist in the 400. Fernan Norwood, who was fourth in the 400, 44-01. Justin Robinson, 44-72. And Rye Benjamin anchored in 44-02. He just Burned it up. 257.31, world leader. France with Ludy Valiant, Gilles Biron, David Sombe, and Theo Andant. 258.45, national record. You will see them in Paris next year. Great Britain, really nicely done today. Alex Haydock Wilson, Charles Dobson, Louis Davy, Rio Mitchum, 258.71, Jamaica, 259.34, seasonal best India, 259.92, and in the Netherlands, 30040. We're going to get down to our final event. Our final event was a women's 4x4, and it's really interesting because on the first night, Femke Bull was uh, battling a U.S. athlete, Alexis Holmes, and she collapsed in the last 30 meters, and they didn't finish, and the ne Netherlands should have gotten at least a silver medal. Femke Bull went on to win the gold in the 400 hurdles, and 5171. But this was the race that put it all together for our talk about ag agony and ecstasy. Canada, Great Britain, and Jamaica were duking it out. It was really, really close. Jamaica, Great Britain were leading. Actually, Nicole Yergin was leading for Great Britain when Femke Bull took the baton. Femke Bull waited till the last 200 meters, moved onto the straightaway and did not take the lead until the last 15 meters. The crowd went nuts. The Netherlands won 320.72 world leader. Jamaica second, 320.88 seasonal best. Great Britain is third, 321.04. Canada fourth, 322.42. Belgium, 322.84. 
no U.S. team, shitty handoff in the qualifying, and they did not go on. But the Netherlands team of Eveline Sauber, Lakey Klaver, Kathleen Peters, and Femke Bull ran a world leader of 3072. Femke Bull was all smiles. She was absolutely crazy, and it was well-deserved. And it was a great way for the meet to end. This meet has been, it's featured 1,994 athletes in, from 200 countries. 94 of the countries had one athlete. So 106 had teams bigger than that. Some teams were two, three, four, five. The U.S. had the biggest team, 164. Okay. The U.S. will lead the medal count and we'll do something about that this week. But... It was a wonderful world championships. Budapest was a great host, about 15,000 to 20,000 people in the morning sessions, even in this incredible heat, which averaged 90 to 95 Fahrenheit a day. In the evenings, it started out in the 90s. Now it's probably down in the low 80s. So the, the moisture <laughs> all over my back is cooling me down. But it has been a great world championships. Run Blog Run and Fortius Media teamed up and we've got a strong team here. We've got riders riding remotely as well as riders riding here and uh, wanted to thank them. I'm going to try to go through the whole list. Let's see. Stuart Weir, David Hunter, Deji Ogoyembu, Justin Lagat, Race Results Weekly with David and Jane Monty and Katha Dennehy were here. Remotely were Sam Ferris. We had Elliot Denman, who is all of 89. This is the first of all the world champs he's missed. So he's been writing a column a day for us. Jeff Benjamin, our senior writer from Staten Island, the mayor of Staten Island running, is writing remotely doing reviews of the New Balance of the uh, of NBC broadcast. And who am I missing? I've got one more. Elliot, Jeff, Sam. We have Kevin Morris here doing photographs. Getty Images is also supplying us with photographs. I think I said Stuart Weir. And then the gentleman who is managing all these wonderful podcasts and coming up with killer artwork is the one and only Mike Deering. Uh, Mike has been working with me for many years. And he has to manage me and laugh at my jokes and many of those things. He's uh, located in the center of the country. And then a shout out to my dear brother, Brian, who is the co-founder with me of Run Blog Run. Brian convinced me in 2006 to start blogging. It changed my life. And by 2016, when I ended our print titles, because no one wanted to advertise in print, we had to shake up our business paradigm and start working on that. And in 2018, when uh, I got sick, uh, we really had to shake it up. Uh, things are going well right now. And we've got the support of Brooks Running, who's been with us for 30 years. Many other brands have supported us along the way. And I'm always very grateful. Nike was a big supporter. Adidas has been a big supporter. New Balance has been a big supporter. Puma has helped a bit. Hoka has been a big supporter and uh, Saucony worked with us for a long time, but uh, some of them feel like they can do stuff on their own. We're very grateful that Brooks is with us and we have a group of other sponsors that are not running brands, which kind of keeps it healthy. But thank you, dear readers. You're what it's all about. We had 2.5 million people reading our stories on a daily basis. Uh, we do a nightly newsletter on Run Blog Run Please sign up for it. It's free. And we've been sending out a coaching newsletter via Coaching Athletics with some of my favorite pieces related to coaches. We did that on a daily basis. I'll be um, doing some things with that this next week. So this is Larry Eater signing off from Budapest in the National Athletics Center. It has been fantastic being here. Last night, I got to do a, um, a segment for BBC World Service. It's one of their radio services. You might hear it on NPR, BBC World. Ed Harry is a big supporter, as is the BBC team. And I've been doing this since 2008. Really enjoy it. So thank you again for our global support. Again, I was going to go to Zurich, but I am just beat. 
I'll be at the Prefontaine, so we'll end the season right. Uh, you'll see me at the New York City Marathon, and then we'll share with you some of the other stuff as we get going into uh, the road to Paris uh, in 2024. Uh, we've been credentialed, so we will be there. Uh, we're working on our housing and all those kind of fun things. So peace out. Thank you again. Thanks to the city of Budapest. Thanks to the nation of Hungary. Thanks to the LOC. Thanks to World Athletics, Sebco has been John Ridgen have been fantastic and their team, the incredible team in the media center, our dear friend, Susanna, who is very helpful and um, laughs at my jokes occasionally too, but there's a great group of young volunteers, about 2,500 volunteers here who really care about the sport and our media friends. Uh, we know a lot in the British media, the Italian media, Sean Ingalls, um, the great group from Athletics uh, Weekly, uh, which are fantastic. Ewan, Jason, and Tim, our friends at Inside the Games, the one and only Franco Fava from Italy, who is one of the most wonderful human beings on the planet. And getting to see him just makes me smile. So um, thanks, Mike, for putting up with the Wisconsin goodbye. This is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run, signing off.